This is our next example, factoring x squared plus 3x minus 28. Now the steps we've described so far really are the steps we will use to factor trinomials as long as our first term is an x squared with no coefficient right here. Now, I just want to say that technically there is a coefficient of 1 that we don't see. So we're talking about factoring trinomials that don't we don't see a coefficient because it's just a 1 and when we get to trinomials that have a 2x squared or a 3x squared etc those have a different way so our approach is just find that pair of numbers what is the pair of numbers that multiplied together they'll equal a negative 28 and added together they're going to equal a positive 3 so definitely it's important to pay attention to those signs since we're looking for a pair of numbers that multiplied together are going to equal a negative 28, we are looking for uh, one positive and one negative number. If we had two positives, that product was going to be positive. If we do a negative times a negative, that's going to be positive. So if, if we are multiplying two numbers to come up with a negative, we have to have one positive and one negative. Now we also know that, well let's, let's go here, these are numbers that are starting to jump out at me. Uh, a 4 times 7, that will get us to 28. We've got one positive, one negative. The question is, which one's which? Is, the, is it going to be a positive 4 with a negative 7? Or is it going to be a negative 4 with a positive 7? So we have to think about, well, what's the pair that's going to add up to equal a positive 3? And think back to adding integers together. If you're adding a positive number and a negative number, the sign of your answer always goes along with the larger number. If you had a larger positive number, your answer is positive. If you had a larger negative number when you're adding, the answer is negative. So since our answer is positive, we know the larger number has to be positive. So that's the pair that we want right there, a negative 4 with a positive 7. As soon as we find that pair of numbers, we can drop them right into these sets of parentheses. Uh, we've got x minus 4 in the first and x plus 7 in the second, and, and that's our answer. It's factored. When it's factored, we have a way to check. And with this type of a problem, with these trinomials, it's not a distribute that's going to be our check. It's going to be to do FOIL method. So we can do FOIL method. We'll come up with x times x is x squared. The outer is going to be a positive 7x. The inner is a negative 4x. The last is negative 4 times positive 7 for that negative 28. We'll see those two like terms in the middle. Combine those like terms. And positive 7 with negative 4 is that positive 3x. So we come up with that trinomial we started with. And that is the way to check that this is exactly how it should be written in factored form. Next, we have a couple examples for you to try. So first up is to factor this trinomial x squared minus 5x minus 24. So take a few minutes, pause this video, work on the problem, and then come back to the screen and we'll look at the answer. Okay, in factored form, I have x minus 8 times x plus 3. I was looking for a pair of numbers that multiplied together equal the negative 24, but if we added those two numbers together, it's going to equal negative 5, and that pair of numbers is negative 8 and positive 3. Here's another example for you to try. So pause the video, think about what it is about the pair of numbers we're looking for, how does that fit into this problem. So pause the video and work it out and then come back and we'll check out the answer. Okay, so just like these other trinomials, we're thinking about what is this pair of numbers out there that, that multiplied together they'll equal a positive 8, but added together they'll equal a negative 6. So their product is positive, that means they either have to be both positive numbers or both negative numbers. But since added together they're going to equal a negative number, that pretty much seals it. We're, we're looking for two negative numbers. Just seeing that multiplied together they'll, they're going to equal a positive, and added together they're going to equal a negative. Just from seeing that, I know that I'm only looking for two negative numbers. So what are some numbers that multiplied together will equal 8? 
negative 4 with negative 2 and add it together, they'll equal that negative 6. There's our answer, x minus 4 times x minus 2. Now we're looking at an example with a larger number involved. We've, we're ending with a negative 108. Our approach is still the same because looking at this problem, we are looking at three terms, and our first term is an x squared with no coefficient, aside from that invisible one. So that means, just from seeing three terms that start with an x squared, we are looking for a pair of numbers that multiplied together will equal negative 108, and added together are going to equal negative 12. Okay, I don't see those numbers. So we need to have an approach, some sort of system for coming up with this pair of numbers for those times when the numbers don't jump out at us so easily. So this is what I would recommend. Don't worry about the add up to negative 12 part and just think about finding pairs of numbers that multiplied together are going to equal negative 108. Now we can say that since these numbers added together are going to equal a negative, that our negative number is going to be bigger. It's, it's a negative product, so we need to have one positive and one negative. Those multiplied together are going to equal a negative, but since added together it's still negative, we know the negative number is bigger. Okay, so let's make a list. Often, to make this list, I'm using a calculator and doing a few divides, and I start with factors of 108, and I start with 1 and 108 and so we'll just make the the bigger one negative then I'll try 108 divided by 2 and we come up with 54 so I found two new factors 2 and 54 I'll try 108 divided by 3 and come up with 36 so I have two more factors 3 and 36 108 divided by 4 gives us 27 so 4 and 27 are, are another pair of factors 108 divided by 5, come up with this nifty decimal number, uh, 21.6. When we're factoring, we're interested in integers only, no decimals, so toss that one out. 108 divided by 6, so what we're doing is just start at 1, work your way up. So you have an, some sort of organized way for finding all the pairs of numbers that will work for the multiply. And what we're doing is just creating a short list, and now we can check this short list to figure out what's the pair that's going to add up to equal negative 12. I would never discourage you from doing this work mentally, but at times, when I'm doing a problem mentally, I can find myself just not getting to that pair that's out there, and, and frustration is something that to totally avoid. So if you can end up getting frustrated, I say just adopt this system. It, it may be, maybe takes a little bit longer than being able to think it through, but it's an organized way. I know it's going to get me to the answer, and that, in the end, is really what makes it worthwhile. So I, I make this list, take my time, thorough is what I am, and then I can find this pair of all these that I know multiplied together to equal negative 108. There's only one pair in here that also adds together to equal that negative 12. So the problem was a little bit um, overwhelming at first with this large number, so you just need to relax and have a system and say, I'm going to go through and find all these pairs and be thorough and cautious, and, you, and you'll find them. So in this case, it was a positive 6, negative 18. We drop those numbers in, and our answer is x plus 6 times x minus 18.